Welcome back to another video in the in the series of. If you look I'm at the camera, scanning. we would have just been done. And we're trying to figure this out. Okay, it's your introduction. <laughs> one of us should have started drinking <laughs> to catch up with the other one. <laughs> Camera. All right, got the camera, camera girl again. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the fourth video of our Canyon Corset. This is a little course on Canyon Rope Systems. We did an overview of what everything's gonna be about and what the terminology is. We did single rope systems and now we're doing twin rope systems. The third video was twin rope, isolated, releasable and static systems. Oh, I got, you got it. I you got, got it. it. Okay. You got it. Somebody's learning. This is going to be our twin rope compound releasable and static systems. Nailed it. This is Brent Roth. He likes canyons and rafting and owning more gear than any man could use in a lifetime. That's true. I don't use and half the shit I own. No, no. We do it to open carabiners. Yeah, for fun. Right? All right. It's <laughs> great. Uh, he's got a big, beautiful plywood climbing wall that you can send and three seconds or less. It's certified by the way. I had it inspected. <laughs> All right, so twin rope obviously is two ropes and compound is, what is compound? So compound means that, <clears throat> that the two ropes going down the pitch yeah. are completely independent of one another. So I can operate two ropes? one. Yep, I can operate one separate from the other, meaning that they're, it's not, like in the isolated systems, you go back and look, it was kind of a dependent thing. So if somebody was using one rope, it was limited on what I could do in the other. Compound is two separate systems. The, the uh, isolated stuff seemed to be like the middle of a rope you're tying off somehow. Yep. yep. Yeah, it might not be exactly the middle, but it's yep. middle-ish. Yep. This, you're kind of turning the what? The rope in, up inverted? It's so a, you have both ends? That is one way. Or two is, separate ropes. That is a great way of, uh, of looking at it. And that's where your double-ended rope bags come in real handy or a second rope. So it was this last time. Yep. And now you're talking about doing, we'll pretend this is the end, doing this and being able to independently do something with either so end. So literally we're doing this. Gotcha. Two independent strands. Two independent strands, but you could technically do this with one rope. Yeah, this is one rope. But you would have to flip it up like this to do it, having the loop at the bottom. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, do tell. So this is the beauty of <laughs> double. This is the beauty of double-ended rope bags. If I have access, every rope has two ends, right? So if I start my rigging by pulling both ends out either at the same time or if a double-end rope bag on either end, I can pull one out and then I access the other. Mm -hmm. And let's say this this pitch is 50 feet, right? I only need 50 feet to run down the wall. She's got a bag full of rope. I got a bag full of rope. It needs to be at least 100 feet in order to do this. And if a lot of the, the pitches we have in Canyon are less than that, this is something that I could do. So all I do is I set this up just like what I did, and I've got two independent strands. Or I could introduce another rope. So I've done this before in a Canyon where I set one anchor, one anchor system, and the first person that goes down and repels, I'm noticing it's taking a lot longer than what I expected, and I've got people behind me. And I'm like, you know what? There's a faster way to do this. I'll grab a second rope and just go ahead and build a second system. That seems very clean and simple. That's it. And then pretty much, if you don't want to watch the whole video, watch these single rope systems and do it twice. <laughs> so we're going to test that theory. So Ryan is going to build our first, oh gosh, our first <laughs> twin compound static system. All right. So, so think about what, what you've learned so far is like what's a twin compound and I'll give you St uh, static, uh, static system, something you can't release, correct? Something you can't release. Okay. Do you want to be able to pull one of them down later? We'll get to that. We'll get to that later. So I just want you to focus on what, what we just talked about. Twin meaning two ropes yeah. down, compound meaning th they're not, it, one is separate from the other. Yeah. And they're, ice, or they're static, meaning I can't release it. Okay. So just think like a climber for a second and think like, here's yeah. your two ropes. Yeah. Don't forget to run one through the ring because you got to. Well, it, yeah, I mean, the, the, <laughs> I would just clip it to the ring. And or, then, but then you'd have to rebuild it. I'd have to rebuild it in order to pull my rope down. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. So just do this again. Okay. So I would run both. Well, I wouldn't run both. No, you want them isolated. Well, 
I want two ropes that I can rappel down, and I still want to be able to retrieve it. So I only need one of these to retrieve. So I'll just run yeah. so one through the ring. One goes through the ring. The other, I could just clip off to, or do a super eight with bunny ears for redundancy, and clip that off, and then create a releasable. And then here, I would run this through here, and do I have some uh, fancy, I guess I could just do. And in order to make like a knot block, I would grab the last loop and the eye of this eight. And this gets knot blocked to that. And I have so, two I independent things. Well, first of all, you don't have a whole lot to repel on here, right? Is this my end I'm repelling with? Yeah. Why? Because so, the rest is in the bag? You got it. Because this is one rope. This right. is legitimately one rope. This is one rope in one bag. So I need, some, I need something to repel down. So you think about this. If I've got access to both ends, I, need to, I want to set my rope length. Okay. I can do that. So I'm going to set my rope length and then just secure it to the anchor. That's what I thought this strand was. Yeah. So, so could, this, could this work? Now, the way you got here, if I threw the bag down, yeah. and I've got the tails tied up here, that is, there is a term we call it like a tail up situation here. But another way to do it, if I want to oh. run this like a compound system, the idea is that I've got the end of the rope down. So you can get off of it. That's right. Because so, you don't want any more in the water than you have to. Or I don't want to put any more rope out of the bag than I have to. Because you got to put it back in the bag. Right. So why put four times the length? So the way you had it there, I'd have a lot of rope You would have thrown the middle of the rope down yep. and had a cluster in the, in the bottom. So I can run this one down and set that, and then we're just going to redo this This guy. to be the tail in the water. And if you think about it, we learned just some regular blocking systems. Is this a good enough blocking system for this sample? Uh, it depends on if you do it right. That looks good. So you tied a figure eight. Figure eight, the back of the figure eight. Sure. And the eye of the figure eight. Yep. Is how you do your figure eight blocks. I would, I would cinch that figure eight up a little bit more snug before putting the carabiner in so it retains the shape, which is important. That way somebody else can identify. It's like, oh, he tied a figure eight knot block in there. The only reason the carabiner is in there is to make it easier to untie and also secure the end as just kind of so a So you backup. want it just a tight. It should look like a good quality eight that I can recognize. Like, oh yeah, that's an eight. And then force that in there so it's kind of more stuck. It's easier to untie. And then I've got something that definitely can't pass through that. Okay. Because if I just rely on this a lot of times with a skinnier rope, then I got to be careful of the skinnier rope pulling through the ring. So, so I did now, not pull out more than I needed. Yep. I have two independent ropes, twin, yep. twin ropes. Yep. Uh, double rope is when it's all continuous like a climber does. Mm -hmm. Twin. You can't release this nope. if I were to like get stuck on rappel in the water, or I need a rescue, there's a rub point, all the stuff we covered in previous videos. Right. It's a static system. Yeah. So this video is not those... meant to be watched before the other ones. <laughs> yeah. So I lose all of those benefits. The only benefit that I'm gaining with this is I can run people down this pitch faster whether they're both on rope actually moving, or I just get somebody in the queue waiting for that person on rappel to get off rope, and then that person's ready to go immediately, and then I hand that rope. But these are two independent lines. And like I said, I have done this before where I rigged up a standard retrievable, um, a single static system, and then been like, oh, I'm gonna rig another one so I can roll people through faster. And I do, did just what you did. So then you would take your bag, so check and this out. And you would out. toss it down. You would get on rappel. Here, and go, then go ahead and put that eight back in there. Okay. So now we're going to talk about retrievable. It's like, well, why wouldn't you always do this? It's like, well, here's the interesting thing, is that I've got all the extra rope hanging out in my bag. Do you want the eight normal? Yep. Just go ahead and okay. clip that up. I've got two ropes that are going all the, all the way to the ground. So okay. in theory, I have enough rope out to retrieve the system, right? All I gotta yeah. do is figure out how to do it. I don't need to take out any more. And this is where this type of system gets kind of interesting. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna clip my bag because it's gonna stay here. Okay. And this is, my, this is my retrievable rope, you see that? Yeah. 
So this rope is already on the ground. If I just take and I move this to here, now I got a rope long enough to the ground to pull this side down. If I am not on this and I let go, it's gonna go down. Then it goes down. So this Unless is where you gotta be careful. Unless there's a ledge, you have to have a clean drop. So not only that, is I wanna make sure I maintain control of this. So what I should do is load this up in my device. Perfect. Look at that, it already wants to go. That way I don't get stuck here at the anchor without a rope. Add my whatever friction you want. I'll go ahead and do a hard lock off. So that and that's not going anywhere. Taking that other strand, and, and this is the strand that made it all the way to the ground, yeah. that I could pull on this. And this is actually a cool little trick. So if the bag doesn't do your job. I can always pull you on You still it. have this tail, instead of being clipped up here, you have it clipped here. Mm -hmm. And I can pull it down. You can pull it down. But I want to make sure that I have the other end locked off. So when I clip, <laughs> yes. put this weight on there, this is actually a really cool trick that's <laughs> yeah. in the in the book that you showed with Andy Kirkpatrick yeah. about it, kind of an automatic retrieval system. Yeah. Let's say I didn't have enough rope, is by leaving leaving a bag, a weighted bag at the top. So when I get off rope, it literally retrieves itself by falling. And that's, I'll show you what that, that looks like. It's like, so I repel down, it's a block system. Yep. It holds. Not gonna come when through. I get down to the bottom, you can see as soon as I get off rope. <clears throat> it's, not an, it's not super heavy, but. It's heavy enough. And this would go yeah. all the way to the ground. So that's the risk that you deal with this, with converting a system like this. Now I could pull it up, restuff rope, and or take the bag down with me if I didn't want to risk all of my rope getting caught up with something. But if it's a clean pull. But you also have the tail. Easy shift to help pull and guide it off of something. Yep, but it, it better be a clean pull. You yeah, do yeah, not yeah, want yeah. this to get stuck on yeah. something. So there's some little caveats, now you gotta start thinking. That's why this is, you know, this far into this video series of like, wait a minute, now there's some more technical stuff I really need to start thinking about and be curious about. This isn't something I just wanna go willy nilly, sacrifice my entire rope bag, yeah. and then go, crap, I let it go, and now I can't reach the tail, and it's stuck, and. So the way that this course <clears throat> has been categorized, right, you got single and twin, and we broke the twin into two categories, isolated and compound. Run me how that's not an isolated system, because we're using one rope. I wanna make sure we understand the difference there, because I had two ropes, they seemed very independent. How would that same system, or similar system, have been a twin isolated system? So twin isolated, means that, remember, it was conditional. It's how it's written in the system. So when you get into like the static system, it's hard, kind of hard to understand. So getting into like, what's, a, what's the difference between a twin compound? It's as simple as a twin compound system. If I just built a normal static block system, and now that rope is out. And let's say I have a normal rope bag where I can't get to the other end. Yeah and I want to start moving people. Simply by introducing another rope. Yeah. Setting this rope length. And attaching it back to the anchor. Now I've got another rope that I could repel down. This, this is technically a twin. Yeah. Two ropes going down the pitch. Yeah. Compound, it's obviously two separate ropes. Yeah, yeah. Static, neither one of these is releasable. Correct. Why would I do this? Is because if this was already rigged static, somebody has got a problem, Yeah. and I wanna go down and help them. So this would be like the rescue rope or backup, or I simply wanna rig another rope, Yeah. because I don't have access to the other end of this, I'm just gonna rig another rope. This could be a single uh, length uh, for the pitch. So if it's 50, 50 foot pitch, this could be a 50 foot rope. Yeah. It doesn't need to be doubled over because I'm not retrieving it. This is when I get the line you're retrieving. Because when I get done, whoop, now I've got my retrieval line. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Whether or not I take the bag down with me. So th this is where we get into, this is more of a concept of understanding and, and like starting to think about how and what you're rigging. These terms don't apply to one specific system or not, or configuration, it's a concept. I got two ropes going down, they're independent of each other, so it's a twin compound. I can't release either one of these. 
And isolated is... Isolated is the same rope. Like the same rope. Always the same rope. Like... And it's literally, the rope goes up through the ring and I'm putting something here. Gotcha. Isolating the two strands. Mm, that's why that's that's the difference. Yep. Okay. Whereas here, this is its own potato. Yep. And then you either take the other end, you do something different. You don't just isolate this leg off. Right. Okay. So what I what I can do It's either a separate rope or the other end of the existing rope. Right. And so the key difference of why I would want to do this is I want a specific rope length. I yep. want those tail ends. I want no more than 20 feet yep. of rope on this. So when we're getting into whether it's a swimming disconnect, mm -hmm. maybe it's not in flow, but you're gonna rappel off into a pool. Yeah. So there's a lot of canyons like that within the Southwest and in California, where it'd be a lot easier just to like plop off the end of the rope and swim away. Yeah. So I'm gonna set that rope length to the water edge. It's not in flow. I don't, there's no abrasion. I don't need a releasable system. This is pretty fast. If I've got access to both ends of the rope bag, like a double-ended rope, it's like I can set this, set this system pretty quickly. In fact, just as fast as I can, a single. And that's because I can pull both ends out of the bag potentially at the same time. So it's literally the same action. You did not put this one in the... Nope. Ah, you're just setting rope length for both. Setting rope length. Only set, one through one. I set my rope length, and now all I gotta do is isolate these two, however. However. However you want, whether it's a block system. And then I could even... take and secure this off to the anchor. Let's get this out of here. So even though it's the same rope. Yeah. Now I've got those two. And this is compound, because yep. they're very yep. separate. And now you can rig this setup, so this would have been releasable. Yeah. And that's where you start adding your EMOs, MMOs. So let's take a look at the type of blocking system did we use earlier that was releasable, you remember? Yes, it was a joker. Think back to single. Oh gosh. Single releasable. That was not filmed in the same session as this. That was a lot this. of videos ago. <laughs> I was thinking if you went through here and you set this up. So it's a block system. What does a block system mean? So you gotta think if I'm using a block eight, I want that eight. Yeah. So definitely you don't want that carabiner in here. So a blocked eight, going back to the single releasable. I've got my repel strand that went down first. Yeah. The repel strand goes down. Yeah. Block system, I'm gonna to want to block on this side. But that's not releasable. It is if you... So this is where the EMO comes into play. So this is not attached to anything, it's just, it's a block. It is straight block, and I'm doing this as my backup. Okay. It's so nobody takes this end and goes for a ride. Right. I'm just gonna put a bunch of twists in there so that stays up kind of nice and clean. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So now, nobody can go down. So this is how a lot of times, if I got a double-ended rope bag, how I'll be moving from a single releasable system into a twin system. Is I'll, I built this, set the rope length, and like I said, I look back and it's like, hey, you know what? I want to move people through here a little bit faster. I've got the other end of the rope. And you don't even have to do releasable for the other one. No. You can choose what to do with your separate, complete, separate, different rope. Right. So I could, I could rig this one static. So Ryan, you go down. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, the rope length is good. I'm like, sweet. While you're down there, check the other rope length. And you're like, the other rope length's good. Awesome. Because you don't want to find out you need more rope. Right. Or there's too much. Like I said, this isn't, this isn't a situation where there's a hydraulic or some feature down there I'm worried about somebody yeah. getting bound up into. I really want to make this just really simple yeah. for people to rappel off the end of the rope and swim away. Yeah. So if somebody's down there like, yeah, the other rope length is good. Go ahead and connect this into the anchor. Now I have a twin compound system. So this might make a little bit more sense of how and why it's compound. Yes. 
and then this is releasable. So you can take the right because winter meal overhand off. Because I wanted you, you to set rope length first. Release it, and that's enough friction. Right. So a compound system can be kind of hybrid. But if I wanted this, if I wanted two releasable systems because either I had rope abrasion or something else going on. How do you add this setup if it's already jammed into here? So if I can get another carabiner in here, yeah, um, I could rig off that, but that's gonna like choke it up quite a bit. So if I have another quick draw, it makes it a little bit cleaner because then I can st extend this out of the way and now I can work from down here. I'm gonna throw in a better carabiner for a munter. Oh, you're just gonna put a munter on there? Yep. And then mule overhand it off. Yep. So now I have a releasable system down here. So there's a munter, I can mule this off. So there's a releasable system. This is the Munter Mule Overhand, MMO. Yep. This is the EMO. EMO, eight mule, mule overhand. overhand. Nailed it. Got it. So two releasable systems, independent of each other. Compound system. And that way you can move people through quick. You can uh, manage abrasion. I can set you, rope length. You I can got rescue. I got rescue. You can rescue from up here. You can rescue from down there. Right. I'll, do you do this a lot? Um, so... How many people do you need to justify doing this? What's nice with carrying a double-ended rope bag, like I said, a lot of times I've set up a system and in the moment been like, man, I really want to start me moving people through quicker. Yeah. If I've got access to the other end of the rope, why not use it? The caveat is when I want to retrieve this system, again, am I willing to sacrifice or my rope bag getting caught up in this because this rope is already going down the full length of the pitch. So this is going to be my Because you could do this strand. and you could clip that. You could undo that. Actually, this needs to be muled a little bit. If I just take that draw out and I attach this one to here. Yeah, you, that was untied. Secure that back off. Hold that. So now we're back to where I've got this strand able to retrieve this, but the entire middle of my rope is still in yeah. this bag. Which could be a lot if you're only could doing be a lot. 25 foot. Yeah, if this is 25 feet and this is a 200 foot rope, 60 meter for those people <laughs> not using freedom units. Um, I need to leave this up here. So yeah. again, now I'm running the risk and now you can see that weight is already on yeah. there. So Let go. So it wants to go, but it is only a rope bag. It's not like there's a human. It's only there. a rope bag, but I need a way to get down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if I do this and, and clip it on and there, they go, and they go, oh <laughs> crap. Hey, somebody toss me that rope. Yeah, that was that was my way out of here. So <laughs> it was. That's that's where that, those are the moments that I want to look at. Is like, is this a good idea or not? So even though I want to get people people through, is this is the pole nice and clean? Um, is it is it worth risking? How would you do it if you wanted bag? to be safer? Like, not risk the rope bag? Yeah, take it with you? I would not. If I had enough rope, take it with me, for okay. sure. But then you need a W at that point. Yeah, then I need four times the length okay. of the pitch. 25 feet might not be the end of the world. You'd have a lot of rope to be dealing with later. Yeah, and that's a whole lot of rope. But if you know you didn't want to get into that and you didn't just find yourself in a situation, how would you go about this then? That's where if I maintained a second rope, why am I hanging onto this rope if I'm not gonna use it? Go ahead and use it. Again, I can still make a releasable system by building an MMO on here. And then when I'm done with that, I can take this out of the system. Clean all When I'm up. ready to go clean all this, throw this down to Ryan and say, Ryan, clean that up. Yeah, yeah, you've done that before. Yep, clean up as much gear as I can. Now I take this rope bag with me just and you can see I've cleaned back to a single retrievable, single releasable, 
and it's retrievable, ready to go. So I've got no, no more rope. I've got, I'm taking advantage of time. If I got other people down below, they can be cleaning up that rope. When I get down, I have the least amount of rope as this bag. Like I said, I'm really looking at efficiency. And really when you pull it down, you could be feeding it back into your bag. Undo this, keep feeding it back. If you're smart, yeah. <laughs> if you're smart. Well, we could know. do it. We could do it anyway. <laughs> we can do it. Oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> so, test time. I'm going to break this down, Ryan, and I want you to build a twin compound releasable system. Dealer's twin choice. Compound releasable anything, system. Anything you've learned so far is fair game to use. Okay. Twin. Twin. Compound. compound releasable. releasable. So they're both releasable. Here's your two ends of rope. So, I would like to make sure one goes through here so I have a s solution later. Right. Okay. So we're gonna repel. Well, there's a, there's a cluster. <laughs> so I can confidently say that I'm not sure where the ends of these ropes are. So I wanna build a releasable system. Correct. And there's a little abrasion. Yep. And we got some noobs with us that might drown in the waterfall. Yep. All right. All so those I'm things. Catching on to why I might want this. Yeah. Let's see if it. I can do it. Hey, you what? They're getting cold. Oh, they're getting. <laughs> start moving. I have no harness with gear. Can I have uh, What do you want? An eight. An eight. Eight. Let's see if I can do the, the eight MO. Eight MO. Now we're renaming stuff. That's awesome. No, it's the EMO. It's the eight MO. This is what makes it releasable. This, this going over, this is releasable. Now I want to lock it off. Right. So this is where I have to go through here. That that adds a little bit more friction, which I have found I like. You like that. I like that. Otherwise, so you could just... I mule? Yep. And then so when I pull this out. Yep. With enough force, I've seen where that will want to kind of start rotating around as the rope wants to slip. So this is why you add a little bit more. Yep. And then you go through here. Yep. Doing your... Your thing. Good mule, yep. A little bit of mule, AKA a slip knot. And then your, wow, I just really overdo the, the overhand. It's all right. And it's a muncher mule overhand. <laughs> so I should probably have a care mirror in here. So check this out because you used this giant loop. Let's go ahead and take advantage of it. We'll secure that end and secure it back Boom. Up. So this can't come off nope. without me wanting it off. Right. Okay. And this is repe Ready for repel repellable. Rappelable. 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 So I have this rope that is also touching the ground. Yep. And I don't want to cluster this up. Can I have a draw, please? MMO. MMO. So can I go into there or does that cluster up going directly into the ring? So I have, do I, because this carabiner can go through the chain, you're saying this might get stuck. Right. Your face is saying you that. Really, you really got to um, kind of watch because I can give you another carabiner because that will not go through the chain. Because well. I plan on loading this, I put it underneath this carabiner that is not going to get yeah. loaded. That's where there's, there's usually enough room in the ring. Okay. If, I, if you clip the ring that the rope, they'll, they'll move. There's room to share in there. I think there's more room in the ring than what there is to hang in. Does this start to get messy for people who show up to start clipping things? Like, where do I put my personal anchor? Oh, absolutely, anchor? absolutely. And that's where we start using, I like using this guy, um, and you can add this in somewhere. Into the ring. Whether the ring or even the chain. Okay. Uh, go, the, go into the ring, let me see what that looks like. So now I can start building systems off of here, and okay. then I can still have a hole for people to for clip personal. in the harness. Okay, so it's got a rigging plate built in. Munter, on a bigger HMS carabiner than the D-shaped carabiners. So this rappel, this is my rappel line right here. Yep, this is in your bag. And this is not going through the ring like I learned in the single systems. So this right. is just a traditional- You already have your single system ready to go. And this is the beauty is once you get this up, yeah. you can start sending the first person down. So that could have been me. So I just like, do some sweet. mules. Call up. And I do some overhands. I start making my way down the pitch. And you could be working on that. This is what you could not do with an isolated system. Mmm, fun facts. So, bunch of mule overhand. Oof. You're learning, you're learning, it's all right. So this is my rappel line, rappel line, but you still have to have somebody come up here and basically clean all this up. 
So we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, this is with the anchor manager. You, you build and this, I go. You and I repel this, this right now. It's your responsibility. You it, clean it. And is nobody's up here. Yeah, somebody's coming back up for sure. Okay, so Brian. let's say I want to release this. Can you put a little weight on that? Yeah, sure. How much weight? One fourteen, two fifty, five hundred and sixty. Because we got <laughs> check it out all. that video. <laughs> okay. So you got this, and then I can go. You trust me? Yeah, unfortunately. Oh. Ooh. And if I'm like, you're like, that's good. And I'm just like, like boom. That's close. Is it? Yeah. I won't go anywhere. What do you think? I think I won't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to have a repel device. You just yeah. needed a little adjustment on abrasion or something. I wanted mm -hmm. to see if I could stop you. Oh yeah, Not totally. finish the job. I'm the last guy to go down. I'm gonna wanna clean this up. Yep. Because I know this, this, magic. Now, I don't wanna just drop stuff. Nope. I'd probably wanna put this back in the back. I remember, well, it so depends. that's what you could do. It you could depends. either pack that, but if I already had enough rope going down the pitch, you already have a pull line. Yeah. But the, what is that condition? What does that set me up to have to do? Do you remember? That means I have to connect the bag. Okay, I'll, I'll go with that. Okay. If I have my pull line, um, I'll just do an eight. I'm gonna set up my rappel first, okay? Because I don't wanna start adding weight to this and not be attached to it. Are you taking, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not taking the bag. The bag's getting Got left it. up here because I feel comfortable with that for some reason. Yeah, you only learned that that part the hard way once. So now I'm, I got all my weight, I got my pull line. Yep. So if this bag doesn't want to cooperate, it I can stuck somewhere. I can yep. pull it out, and then I can start my repel. No wait, that's me. <laughs> yeah. You get you get the idea. You get the idea, and then I can pull my rope through, mm -hmm. pull the rope through, and then we just have to clean up both ends of the rope because your double-ended rope bag is, you gotta stuff the middle back in yeah. until the ends are right ready for the yep. next. Seems like you kinda understood what was going on there pretty quickly. I don't think so because I actually have been studying this material to do this video with you for a while. What? I, <laughs> This isn't my first time hearing about it. <laughs> what? How could you possibly learn this, Ryan? Ah, uh, um, this is the only canyon course you could possibly ever need. <laughs> right? No. No. <laughs> um, we'll be linking in the blog where all this content is, where you can follow in order because YouTube recommends you whatever it wants to. So the reason we joke this is a course set is this is not the only thing you need to watch before you go down a canyon. Please go with somebody who knows what they're doing if it's the first, second, or f and honestly until you know what you're doing. <laughs> Even if I can demonstrate this on the wall after highly editing out all my mistakes, still I wouldn't go down a canyon without understanding a lot more than just a couple rope tricks. There are canyon courses that we will link to in the blog. The blog is always gonna be in the link in the description. It's going to guide you the way I want you to see these videos, in order. And this is not the first video of the course. So if you're just now seeing this, click this for actually making it the end of a video <laughs> you're probably lost in, and go watch the, uh, the overview video that leads into why we have the different single, twin, and then the next ones will be the double or doubled system, so where it's kind of like basically how a climber repels, where we put the rope through here, a little teaser, and you have basically both strands, and well, that should be a short video. You think? 